Hey fighting game enthusiasts, have you caught Justin Wong's latest video titled Can Tournament Players Beat Alpha 1 Akuma? It's quite the showdown, with many top players struggling against the formidable might of this character. But what exactly makes Alpha 1 Akuma such a tough opponent to overcome? Let's dive into the reasons behind his challenging nature in this episode. Without further ado, let me welcome you to the Fighterverse. To start this episode, let's start reviewing what makes Street Fighter Alpha 1 Akuma so dangerous in Street Fighter Alpha 1. Akuma emerges as a formidable adversary, setting himself apart with a multitude of challenges for players to overcome. One of his most intimidating traits lies in his unparalleled damage output, far surpassing that of his fellow combatants. His attacks strike with ferocious potency, often punishing players severely for even the slightest misstep. Adding to the intensity is the relentless and aggressive AI behind Akuma's movements. Unlike other players, Akuma's AI consistently applies unyielding pressure, leaving little respite for players to formulate effective strategies or mount counterattacks. Compounding the challenge is Akuma's lightning-fast and unpredictable moveset. His repertoire includes a diverse array of techniques, from devastating strikes to evasive maneuvers. The inclusion of his teleportation ability further complicates matters, enabling Akuma to swiftly traverse the battlefield, confounding players and disrupting their defensive stances. This combination of speed and unpredictability makes it exceedingly difficult for players to anticipate and react to Akuma's assaults effectively. Akuma's strategic design minimizes opportunities for exploitation. Unlike some opponents who may possess discernible weaknesses, Akuma presents few vulnerabilities for players to capitalize on. His moves are meticulously crafted to minimize exposure, making punishment a challenging prospect. Moreover, Akuma's defensive capabilities often nullify attempts to breach his guard, leaving players with few avenues for offense. One important question is why was Street Fighter Alpha 1's AI so difficult? Well, the aggressive AI in Street Fighter Alpha 1 was designed to provide a challenging gameplay experience for players. During the development of fighting games, developers aim to create AI opponents that offer a reasonable level of challenge to players across different difficulty settings. In the case of Street Fighter Alpha 1, the developers intentionally programmed AI to be aggressive, to keep players engaged, and provide a sense of accomplishment when they defeat challenging opponents. A more aggressive AI can help players improve their skills by encouraging them to learn and adapt to different fighting styles and strategies. Additionally, the aggressive AI in Street Fighter Alpha 1 was influenced by the game's overall tone and design. Street Fighter games are known for their fast-paced, intense battles, and a more aggressive AI aligns with the franchise's competitive nature. The decision to make the AI aggressive in Street Fighter Alpha 1 was a deliberate design choice by the developers to enhance the game's difficulty and provide an engaging gameplay experience for players. So, how can you beat Street Fighter Alpha 1 Akuma? Few opponents strike fear into the hearts of players quite like Akuma. His relentless aggression, coupled with algorithm prowess that seems to predict every move, presents a formidable challenge to even the most seasoned fighters. However, there exists exists a strategy, honed through trial and error, that offers a glimmer of hope against this seemingly undefeatable foe. Understanding Akuma Shin Before delving into the intricacies of combat against Akuma Shin, it's crucial to comprehend the nature of his algorithmic design. Unlike traditional adversaries, Akuma Shin possesses an advanced AI system capable of analyzing and countering a wide array of inputs with uncanny precision. This means that conventional strategies relying solely on offense or predictable patterns are doomed to fail. To emerge victorious, one must adopt a defensive counterattack approach, exploiting the AI's vulnerabilities while remaining elusive and adaptive. The defensive counterattack strategy revolves around luring Akuma Shin into overcommitting to offensive maneuvers, only to punish his aggression with calculated precision. Here's a breakdown of the key components. 1. Patience and Discipline Against Akuma Shin, impatience is the enemy. Players must resist the temptation to engage in reckless exchanges and instead focus on maintaining a defensive posture. This requires discipline and a keen understanding of when to strike and when to retreat. 2. Whiff Punishment Akuma Shin is not immune to mistakes. By baiting him into whiffing attacks, players can capitalize on openings to deliver punishing counterattacks. Mastering the art of whiff punishment demands impeccable timing and spatial awareness, but the rewards are well worth the effort. 3. Footsies Central to the defensive counterattack strategy is the concept of footsies, the delicate dance of spacing and positioning designed to control the flow of combat. Against the Kuma Shin, skilled footsies can disrupt his offensive rhythm and create opportunities for counterplay. By maintaining optimal spacing and utilizing quick, precise movements, players can dictate the pace of the match and keep Akuma Shin on the defensive. 4. Grappling While Akuma Shin excels in close quarters combat, he's not invulnerable to grappling techniques. Incorporating throws and command grabs into your arsenal can catch the AI off guard and disrupt 
disrupt his momentum. However, timing is key, as mistimed attempts can leave you vulnerable to punishment. Sharpening your reaction skills. Engaging in combat against Akuma Shin is not merely a test of skill, but a trial of patience and adaptability. Successfully implementing the defensive counterattack strategies demands lightning fast reactions and split second decision making. By facing off against this formidable opponent, players can hone their reflexes and elevate their gameplay to new heights. Moreover, the skills acquired through this grueling ordeal can translate to unparalleled dominance against human adversaries, making you a force to be reckoned with in the competitive arena. But with the right strategy and mindset, victory is within reach. By embracing the defensive counterattack approach, mastering the fundamentals of whiff punishment, footsies, and grappling, and honing your reaction skills through relentless practice, you can overcome even the most formidable opponents. So step into the arena, steal yourself for battle, and prove that no algorithm, no matter how advanced, can withstand the indomitable spirit of a determined fighter. Now, if you're a true Street Fighter aficionado, you probably remember the Dreamcast port of Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, and guess who made a surprise appearance? That's right, Tenakuma, a variant with the same prowess as Shinakuma and the added flair of a killer super combo. Now, as we delve into the visuals of Tenakuma, one intriguing aspect stands out. Despite being a separated variant, he looks exactly like his original self. The only way to distinguish him is by keeping a keen eye on the super meter at the bottom. Now, you might initially think, well, that doesn't sound like much of a difference, does it? But here's where the surprise kicks in. In terms of gameplay, Tenakuma seamlessly inherits all the abilities of the player-controlled character while also incorporating enhancements from his CPU counterpart. This translates to a significant power boost, featuring higher damage output, faster recovery times, and an impressive double Zanku Hadouken air projectile. Adding to the arsenal is the introduction of a brand new super combo, the Shan Goku Satsu, elevating Tenakuma's attack power to unprecedented levels. Remarkably, he emerges as the pinnacle of strength within the game, even surpassing the formidable original boss version of Akuma. A fascinating tidbit lies in the fact that Tenakuma holds the distinction of being the first version of Akuma from Street Fighter II capable of executing the Shan Goku Satsu during gameplay. This milestone predates subsequent incarnations, including Turbo Revival, HD Edition, and Ultra, making Tenakuma a groundbreaking character in the evolution of Akuma's combat capabilities. It's these thoughtful details that not only make Tenakuma a force to be reckoned with, but also connect the player to the rich history and symbolism embedded in the Street Fighter universe. In summary, Tenakuma emerges as a distinctive variant in the Street Fighter 2 series. Now, let's transition to the evolution of Akuma across different Street Fighter iterations, tracing his journey from his past to the present. His basic version, as fandom states, Akuma is a cold and extremely powerful warrior whose sole reason for being is to hone his fighting skills by battling and destroying strong foes. He rarely displays any sign of emotions or humanity, and rarely smiles. As a righteous calling, or as an afterthought of conquering a major adversary, he will not engage in battle against helpless people. Akuma usually wears a dark colored G with the sleeves removed, similar to Ken and Ryu. He has red hair with a top knot, sharp pointed teeth, and is often barefooted, though some games have him wearing brown sandals. Depending on the game or piece of art, he either wears a black belt at his waist or a length of rope. Over his hands, he either wears brown training gauntlets or wraps his hands with rope as well. He has tan skin and crimson eyes, and wears his deceased master prayer beads around his neck. When fighting another fighter, Akuma rarely resorts to his true strength. He only fights warriors he deems worthy, or those he believes have the potential to become such. Akuma fought Ryu in Street Fighter Alpha 2 just to gain insight into Ryu's abilities. Shin Akuma, known in Japan as Shin Goki, appeared in Street Fighter Alpha 2 as a hidden boss. This is the form Akuma takes when he becomes almost one with the Satsui no Hado, although he does not lose his humanity in doing so. His personality remains more or less the same as the original. Essentially, he is Akuma using the fullest extent of his power. However, he is more competitive in battle and less merciful when he is fighting a strong warrior. He will only fight at his true potential when he has found an equal to do battle with. The two versions operate very similarly, but Shin Akuma is faster, deals more damage, and can throw two Sanku Hadokens at once. His special moves also tend to have more priority and recovery compared to the playable version. Also, his Shin Gokusatsu is much faster and travels farther, making it harder to evade and in some instances inflicts more damage. In some games, Shin Akuma also has extremely powerful specials as well. Shin Akuma's overall style revolves around completely overwhelming the opponent. He already adds more on top that he can already do as his normal state. 
and with practically no recovery between his attacks, he can string together more devastating cross-up attacks and combos that he can't do as his regular self. Shin Akuma is not to be taken lightly, since he can do severe damage to a careless player or the opponent. Oni which translates to ogre, is Akuma in his strongest form. This is the form Akuma takes when he has become one with the Satsui no Hado entirely, completely losing any shred of humanity he had remaining. Due to his training and meditation, Akuma may have surpassed some of the darker aspects of the Satsui no Hado, allowing him to control his actions. As Oni, he finally becomes one with the Satsui no Hado, whose power has now managed to completely overtake him. Oni appears as a far more muscular and noticeably larger version of Akuma. He has dark blue skin, glowing yellow-red eyes, and glowing spiky shoulder-length hair, fangs, and short protrusions on his forehead, resembling growing horns. The top half of his G has been blown off by the amount of dark chi he emanates, showing off his musculature. The prayer beads that were once around his neck now float about, disconnected around his body. Having reached the full extent of the Satsui no Hado to the point of turning into a demon, instead of a concrete martial arts style, he relies on unrestrained yet graceful movements filled with abandon, embodying that of a terrible destructive force beyond control. The Satsui no Hado also enables him to perform powerful energy attacks as well. Another version of Akuma is Cyber Akuma, mechanically enhanced by Apocalypse. Cyber Akumas' upgrades include a mechanical right arm, dub booster rocket, metal wings, and four extra arms that are only seen in one of his win poses. His first appearance was in Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter as the final boss. Because of Apocalypse's control over him, Cyber Akumas' personality is vastly different from that of the original Akumas, being more surreal. This is the mecha version of Akuma called Zero Akuma. Zero Akuma is an extremely powerful mech based on Akuma, featured in the game Cyberbot's Full Metal Madness. It featured a unique play style, similar to Street Fighter's Akuma, as well as a unique life bar design. Zero Akuma's powers and abilities are flight, weapon mastery, energy manipulation and energy projection, martial arts, force field creation, and explosion manipulation. Having mastered the original form of the unnamed Shokotan art, Akuma's fighting style is based on the same vein as the all-around characters, with a much more offense-oriented design. Akuma's overall style focuses on completely dominating the opponent and preventing counterattacks. His mix of raw attack power, combined with moves that can control the air and keep him mobile, allow him to maintain a fierce onslaught offensive that can end matches quickly. However, Akuma power is offset by very low stamina and stun, meaning that any whiffed attack or defensive opening could irreversibly tip the scales against him and lead to a massive punishment. As a result, heavy investment on the player's part is required to properly utilize his full potential. As a computer-controlled boss, Akuma is even more powerful, faster, and more durable in comparison, usually only appearing as a final or hidden boss. This reflects his personality, as Akuma often holds back his power so as to give his opponents a fighting chance. When fought as a secret boss, Akuma effectively deems the player's character worthy and powers up accordingly. In order to face him, you have to either obtain a high score, reach the last stage quickly, or defeat many human opponents without losing a single credit. Now with Akuma's basics, Akuma has better projectiles than the rest of the cast, goes through other characters' projectiles with his tatsus and teleports, controls distance better with his air hadouken due to invulnerable tatsus and never dizzies. It looks like he gets dizzy, but Akuma recovers instantly, effectively saving him from longer combos and juggles, but still leaves him vulnerable to meaties on wake up. Akuma basically has all option selects from the old Shotos, plus other advantages from the CP1 Ryu and the inescapable projectile traps with Air Hadouken and fierce Shankunetsu Hadouken. His strengths, high priority normals, and most are fast to come out. Great zoning game with two good ground fireballs that can knock down, as well as an air fireball that basically all the cast have no answers for. Can easily escape from corner traps or bad situations with teleport. High damage combos and specials, juggles well. Inescapable corner trap on some characters. Two good offensive reversals in SRK and Satsu. Can play well offensively or defensively. Also has good combo ability. When dizzy he recovers instantly. So he will still fall for a dizzy and he's vulnerable to a meaty on waking up in his dizzy state. But that's it. As for Akuma's weaknesses, below average rain on normal has no super and is banned from basically everything. Balance issues. In Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Akuma is banned in US tournaments. 
and soft band. For example, not used on principle as opposed to being officially unusable in Japanese tournaments. This is a result of the fact that Akuma was initially designed to be extremely powerful. Such powerful is potentially reflected in his lack of a super combo at that point. Turbo HD Remix attempted to make this effect and Akuma more playable by lowering his stamina, giving the Sanku Hadouken a blowback effect and adding a much weaker Shun Goku Satsu as his super combo. Despite these efforts, Akuma has remained banned in the HD Remix for the large majority of tournaments as the changes made to this character did not offset his overreaching power compared to the rest of the cast, and in some cases made it worse. Due to the steep angle of the Sanku Hadouken, inherited from his later appearances, it is possible to perform cross-up combos that could not be done originally, and with the blowback effect, he can gain extra airtime to avoid a projectile the opponent throws at him. In addition, due to a bug and the move's speed, the Raging Demon cannot be interrupted at close range, making it nearly impossible to avoid when cornered. In the original Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Akuma had four different win quotes, the most out of all of the other characters. Also, when he is about to be fought, his music is already playing and he introduces himself to the player character. In Hyper Street Fighter 2, a bit of M. Bison themes plays, and then Akuma's theme plays when he appears, and then the fight begins from there as if to create a surprise to the players. Why Akuma's win quotes were removed from the overseas versions is unknown. In the CPS 2 Street Fighter 2 games, it is highly implied Akuma is the Ancient One, and Bison was referring to in his ending. It is rather odd that Akuma would be the Ancient One, as he is younger than Gouken. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe for more intriguing content, and share your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, this is CB signing off and I look forward to diving into more fascinating narratives with you in the future.